Hey there, this video is going to be a follow-up or essentially a companion video to the one we did recently on forming and working with polynomials in NumPy. Uh, we, will be, we will be looking at what they call convenience classes to define um, power, the power series, um, orthogonal polynomials such as Legendre and Chebyshev. Now, I got a question that I'm really unable to answer about how to use uh, uh, the, this series uh, in regards to Chebyshev. The question had to do with uh, machine learning to find support and resistance uh, levels for basically technical analysis. And obviously I can't do that without knowing all the details of the project, uh, what work it was based on, and um, even so I don't have time to take, a, take apart a project of that magnitude. So what I'm going to do is basically go over two of these helper classes. They're all ortho orthogonal polynomials, uh, polynomial series, so what I'm going to do is just talk briefly about uh, how to use them uh, with two examples, one using Legendre polynomials and the second using Chebyshev polynomials. Okay, so for this we really don't need any imports, just NumPy and uh, matplotlib for some plotting. Now the main difference between what we did last time with the polynomial objects and this is that the original polynomial objects we talked about uh, define a single polynomial, whereas these helper functions define a whole series. So let me just demonstrate what I mean by that. So for example, if we want this polynomial here, 1 plus uh, x minus 2x squared, we could just create np. Dot uh, poly dot uh, polynomial and we just enter an array of our coefficients in ascending order so 1 comma 1 comma minus 2 and that just defines this polynomial we talked about uh, mentioned up right here so if I want to evaluate this at x is equal x equal to 2 I could say print p at 2 it is minus 5. So let's just kind of confirm that. Print uh, 1 plus 2 minus 2 times uh, 2 squared. And indeed we get minus 5. So this is what we did last time. Now there are a whole series of different types of different classes of polynom polynomials if you will. Um, for example, Legendre polynomials that have a whole bunch of unique and useful properties. And this is a pretty deep to topic. You can go into whole whole courses into these kind of special special polynomials. So these are typically defined on the interval minus one to one. And I've listed out the first, uh, what, five of them here. So the first one is just one x. The next one is a quadratic, cubic, and quartic, and so on. The next one would be obviously fifth order. So what those special utility functions do is allow you to define a whole series. So whereas here these coefficients were our, um, uh, the coefficients of the individual terms in this polynomial here, when you create these, the coefficients are going to be the coefficient that's multiplied times each of these polynomials and then these all get summed together into some one master polynomial. So for example, Here's here here. I want to create a uh, the function two x from this. So that's basically two times p one. So what I could do is come down here and go p is equal to n p dot polynomial dot Legendre. I think that should be in lowercase l and then capital L for Legendre. And then I define my coefficients. So I only want it up to first order. So I only need two coefficients. And then I don't want the one. So that coefficient is going to be zero. And I want a two here to, to multiply it times two times x. So my coefficients are zero and two. So I'll run that. Does it take it? Yeah. And let's, um, I don't know, let's evaluate two x uh, when x is equal to three. So it should be equal to six. Let's just confirm that this is doing what we think it is. P three. 6. So really that's it. It's just a simple way to create a bunch of a series of polynomials and then use all that machinery that uh, exists in all the um, the higher up classes to manipulate them. And there's a typo in here. I need to put in a line break. So I just want to play around with this a bit and do a simple example where we uh, basically approximate a function as a finite uh, series of Legendre, a finite sum of Legendre polynomials. 
So let's get rid of that cell uh, since we don't need it. Uh, I'm going to define my interval. And re remember, this is on the range um, zero, minus 1 to 1. So np dot lin space minus 1 to 1. Let's do 100 points. Um, this is my x value. Oops. And my function is just going to be, uh, let's just do sine of 2 times x. And plt dot plot x comma y black line. I get sick of typing np in front of all of these. np dot sign. So that's what we're trying to approximate right there. And now um, we're going to take advantage of this orthogonality relationship basically to get these coefficients. Um, these a sub n's here. And this is the formula uh, down here. It's pretty straightforward how to derive it. Uh, basically, you're just taking the inner product um, with some arbitrary, you know, some arbitrary polynomial. And then because of the orthogonality, if they are not the exact same, if m is not equal to n, uh, the all the other terms in the summation go to zero, except for when n is equal to, m is equal to n, and then you get uh, this basically here. And this is just basically algebra to rearrange the whole, rearrange it and get out the coefficient. And I already uh, calculated these out. I used SymPy to do all the integrals. I didn't quite do it by hand. So let's um, just say, let's call it coefs is equal to np dot load txt coefs. Okay, that looks good. So that's just the numbers we're going to be using. So let's just uh, create a couple of examples to create the Legendre polynomials and kind of see how well they approximate the uh, this function here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And up here, I'm going to create, um, let us just say p is equal to np dot polynomial dot Legendre dot Legendre with a capital L. And let us uh, just use the first two coefficients of coefs. So coefs um, 0 to 2. And then we come down here. We'll do a plt dot plot x comma p of x. And we will make this a, I don't know, let's make it a, um, a blue dotted line. What did I do here? I screwed this up. p of x a blue dotted line and I need a closing parenthesis. Uh, that should be a capital P and that should also be a capital P. So there we go. Um, linear, that's not a very good uh, approximation. So let us go down here actually and do a uh, plot the error. So plt dot plot uh, x comma, let's do our function y, which is sine of 2x, minus our approximation via the Legendre polynomial, minus p of x, and make that a black line. So obviously this is not a good approximation at all. So let's come up here and add in a couple more terms. Let's just do, um, make this 4. Well, that looks substantially better. Let's plot the error. So now we're down to, you know, point uh, zero two zero three. So we're, you know, a couple percent off. Let us just uh, plot all of them here. Let's just get rid of that. Plot. Plot. And now our errors are really small on the order of 10 to the minus 7. So, um, yeah, that's about it. No, you know, if this looks familiar to you, if this kind of looks like a, a Fourier, tr Fourier transform type of thing, that's because it's the same type of idea. It's an expansion in terms of orthogonal functions. And in fact, um, just like Fourier transforms, there's a discrete variation there uh, of this, uh, this concept. And it turns out it's not particularly computationally efficient to calculate uh, these, these these expansion coefficients. I believe, if memory serves, it's like a it's like a quadratic relationship. It goes as the square of the number of points that you are trying to uh, to use. 
And again, if memory serves, there's two exceptions to uh, to that that uh, you know quadratic rule, and that is the Fourier transform. There's an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform, which is um, in n log n time, and uh, also the Chebyshev transform, which basically uh, is this expansion in terms of Chebyshev polynomials. And that is because you can cast um, that type of expansion in terms of, of sines and cosines. So you can get away with using using the fast Fourier uh, transform, which is why, which may be why the um, the the fellow who asked the question why uh, his his reference sources were referencing um, Chebyshev polynomials. But anyways, um, that's neither here nor there at the moment. Um, now that you have the this uh, you know expansion in terms of Legendre polynomials down here. You can use them um, as you would any other type of polynomial. So I could find the roots. Um, this function has only one real root on this interval minus one to one. So I should come down here. Um, R is equal to p dot roots print R. And there we go. Uh, let me just iterate over this. And uh, so for a little r in capital R print little r. So here we go. Here is our one real root. It's zero. Um, these guys are um, complex numbers up here and down here. Well, actually, these four are real, right? It's zero, uh, zero times j, um, but they're outside of the range minus one to one. So we get our one real real root. And that's basically how do you, you, how do you use these. You have all the same capabilities that you do with the regular polynomial objects. So on to Chebyshev. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. The reason I spent a lot of time on the Legendre is that we're going to use it um, in the near future in an upcoming video, or at least a modified version thereof. So I just thought I'd get uh, get you all familiar with him. Um, the orthogonality relationship for the for the Chebyshev is here. It's kind of similar uh, similar concept to to Legendre, and I don't really I never really use these in any uh, any to any extent. So I don't quite know what to, what to show here. Uh, we did a polynomial interpolation problem recently where we uh, showed why you can't really use high order polynomials to fit to, to, fit to data. Uh, here, let me copy and paste in uh, that uh, example. So we generated random samples. Um, 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 we have 16, uh, 15 data points here. And we tried to come up with a polynomial that went through all of them. And while we succeeded, there were some major problems at the edge. Uh, so just let me paste uh, paste in that section of code. So uh, we're taking our Lagrange interpolating polynomials here, kind of fitting, fitting it to the data, and then plotting the results. So let's run this. Uh, yeah, I didn't do the import. So let me come up here and add that uh, that import in. And... Rerun it, and I think when I did that video, I pulled in the polynomial class explicitly. So np dot polynomial dot polynomial. Okay, got it. Um, so you see the problem here. It goes through all the points, but you get these wild oscillations at either end. And I refer to this as polynomial wiggle. Uh, it's often in the literature referred to as Runge's phenomena. Uh, what I did not uh, talk about in that video was something called uh, Chebyshev nodes. Uh, if you, sp if, instead of just having these linearly spaced, if you space them in a particular way, you can get a much better result. Um, that spacing turns out to be, there are many ways to define it and calculate those nodes, but in this case, it'd be the, the roots of this like 15th order polynomial. So let's generate those nodes uh, via just a, a simple formula. Uh, we'll see that the interpolation works a lot better and then show that those nodes are also the roots of that, uh, that Chebyshev polynomial. So down here, I am just going to rescale my x values here. In fact, let me actually just copy uh, these x values just to make sure that uh, I don't accidentally overwrite something. Okay, and I'll put a link to this article, uh, the Wikipedia article on these nodes. This is the formula to generate them. Let me just make sure that this runs. Yes, it does. So, 
let me uh, plot what these nodes look like. So this is the new spacing of our x values. And the hand-waving explanation as to why this is going to give a better results is there are tighter and tighter uh, data points. The density of data points is higher along the edge and kind of uh, weaker in the middle. So that kind of clamps down on where this becomes problematic here. So we have good good behavior in here. We probably don't need a high density of points, but out here we have issues. So that higher density of points um, works. So now let's just now let's just do the interpolation and see what happens. Okay, so I've done the same thing we did above. We use the uh, Lagrange interpolating polynomials and we just plot out the results. So let's run it. And what's the problem? Uh, it was the same as above. I didn't, um, I called in the polynomial function explicitly in my test code. So here we go, and obviously this is a hell of a lot better than this. So let us come down uh, and calculate the roots of this polynomial and show that they're the same as these nodes that we calculated um, up here. So just as with our Legendre polynomials, I'm going to create a uh, coefficient array here, which is going to be all zeros except for the 16th element. Um, because, you know, uh, you have n plus 1, if a 15th order polynomial has 16 uh, coefficients. I create our Chebyshev polynomial, I calculate the roots, and just so that everything is um, ordered, I resort these x values to make sure they're in ascending order. So, let's just loop over these, um, the, these vectors x and r and print out the results, uh, just to see that they're identical, and then we'll just do an all close command to see indeed if they are all within you know machine precision or whatever the, the tolerance is set to in that function so yep obviously they're basically the same thing and we get a true down here so this is running a bit long and since this is all essentially the same as legendre i think i'm just going to call it quits here um the reason i called i wrote out this uh, orthogonality relationship is because i thought i was going to do something just to show that indeed uh these these polynomials are orthogonal just by essentially verifying this uh, numerically but um, as we're running we're running long as it is and then if we do it numerically this um, 1 over x uh, squared is going to cause a, a problem um, <coughs> at x is equal to plus or minus 1. So I might uh, uh, when I upload this put that in but right now I think I'm just going to uh, end, the, end this here. So yeah that's about it. Um, if you have any comments or questions please please feel free to leave them below and until next time see ya.